you may recognize this as a chessboard and you'd be right this is a chessboard and that's because today I'm going to be making a chess AI now in chess you have two main parts there is the chessboard which the pieces play on and there is the chess AI now in a perfect world these two interact to give something that the game player is seeing here where the chess AI is able to move pieces on the board and the player is able to interact with the chess AI now, this has been done thousands of times on YouTube. The difference between what I'm going to do and what's been done on YouTube is that I'm going to use something called a neural network. Neural networks are like a black box. You give them an input and they give you an output. And you train this black box to give better outputs. Instead of creating a board, the first thing I did was I found a library that allows me to make legal moves on this representation of a board which can be found right here. Essentially, it's just letters on dots. Now, the first step was to convert this representation from this chess library into a representation of a list where my computer can actually read it. So, the first thing I did was I created a function that takes this chessboard, looks at the location of the pieces, and then it tells me exactly where each piece is using a numerical list. Alright, so this first class you're seeing is a board class. Now, the board class stores the value of the player's turn, uh, what the player's turn wants to be, if the board should be flipped or not, and how to push a piece. Now this is the game class. The game class takes the board's representation and it converts it into an interface where the player can interact with the board. Now the board uses the representation we created to display the pieces on the board and we do this through Pygame. Running this program, we first see that it requests to know who's going to play on what side, and after it does this, we get a representation of the board where we can type in our move and it plays the move. Okay, so now that we're done with the actual board, we need to create the AI, and this is the hardest part, perhaps the most time consuming part. So, to start off, there are two main methods of doing this. Uh, the first method is through Monte Carlo tree search. This is a tree search that uses statistics and probability to predict the best move. Second method, the most brute force method, is minimax algorithm. So I spent a few months trying to get Monte Carlo tree search along with uh, reinforcement learning to start working, but after a lot of time wasted, it didn't really work out, so I scrapped it all and I restarted. Okay, so the first step in programming it was to actually understand the algorithm, so I'm just going to start explaining it. So essentially in Minimax, the objective is to maximize and minimize depending on the person's turn. So in this example, it's white's turn to play, so white is trying to maximize the score and black's trying to minimize the score. So in Minimax, typically you start at the bottom of the tree and from the bottom we go up every time. So at the bottom, since it's white's turn, white maximizes and then black tries to minimize that and white uh, maximizes from there and then that's the move that you're going to play. Now this can go till any depth, obviously there's a certain depth limit where the computer can actually calculate this. In theory minimax is really easy but it's actually quite hard. So here I have a computer move function class which essentially gives me legal moves or a list of legal moves that I can use on the minimax algorithm and it gives me a value per position. Now in the value I take into account the value of each piece, I take into account if it's checkmate or not, and I take into account the neural network's point of view on the actual board. And here is the max function. Now essentially what it does is this. If the game is over or the depth is equal to zero, it kills it, the, the branch of the tree that it's on. And it's as it goes through and it recurs through each uh, different board state, what it does is it calls itself and it decreases the depth by one. So if I put a depth of four on the second layer, it would be depth of three, then two, then one, then zero. And every time it's changing the move, so it's looking for blacks minimizing or whites maximizing. And essentially that's how this function works. And then it returns the evaluation and it returns the best move. Now that I have the algorithm, in order to make sure good moves are played in the beginning, I created essentially an opening book using games played by masters. Now, this is when I started training the AI, and I know this video has already gone on with a lot of programming, so I decided to just train it and leave anything else I did outside, and I'll just show you the final results. So, here they are. Okay, so round one, we start off with the Rui Lopez opening, and the computer is playing strong while well, it's just using an opening database, and, um, let's see, 
yeah, the minute it has to get off the opening moves, it messes up, so gotta go fix that. So round two, we start off with the same opening yet again. I have no clue why, but it always plays a Rui Lopez. And here, the computer plays surprisingly well, even though it makes some minor mistakes. Obviously, it's never gonna match up Stockfish, right, because it's the highest level. And it just made the biggest blunder I've ever seen, so... I guess I'm just gonna leave it here. I don't really want to work on it more, but I'd say this is a success, considering I only spent like four months on it, and it plays this well. I think if I spent more time training it and getting it better, it could maybe, I don't know, win against Stockfish 6 maybe? 